All right, here we are back for tutorial number two on just really getting started with R and R Studio. So what we did in the last video is we just learned how to start to interact with the R Studio environment and how to create a couple of objects. And in this video, we'll create a few more, more complex objects, as well as start to learn how to create an R project and a script file. So let's get right into it. Here we are back in the R environment. So now let's start to make things a little bit easier. We want to save everything into what's called an R project. So the way we do that is we create a project and we save it into a folder somewhere on our computer. I'm going to create a project in a folder called R under that specific classes folder on my computer. I'll show you how I do that. So if I go up to the file menu up here in the top left, scroll down and I click on new project here. It says, do you want to save your workspace to our data? And I'm going to say, no, don't save right now. Now, it's asking me, do I want to create a project from an existing directory, a new directory or version control? Don't worry about version control now. I'm going to click on a new directory. I'm going to create something new. And I'm going to create a new project, not any of these other things. So new project and my directory name, I want to just call it R. And where do we want it to be in a subdirectory or subfolder of? And I'm going to find my classes folder. So I'm going to and it's in, in this folder that I'm going to create it. So it's going to be in this a subfolder of this folder. Don't have to worry. You can put it wherever you like. I'm going to hit create project and it creates this new project and we can see that it's an empty project. It's gotten rid of my old environment variables. I didn't care about those. I didn't need to save them. Now, the other thing we can do is we can go up to here and go new file, and we want to create a script file. Now, a script file basically allows us to save all of our commands into a file so we can run that at various different times or come back to them and run them again. So I can hit our script and it creates this file and it opens up a new panel you can see right above the console. Now, another way I could have done that is just by pressing this um, icon that's got like a little box with a green plus on it, and that'll create the same thing. Okay, so now that we've got a new script file, what we could see is how do we run commands in that? So the first thing we're going to do is show you that there are different data types that R can work with. Now, the first one we've already seen, that's a numeric data type. So I might want to call it num, and I'm going to into that put the number uh, one, and that's numeric data. Now what we see is I hit enter there and nothing happened. I didn't get anything in my environment and nothing happened in the console. I've only created some command that's in the script. If I want to now run that command, I've got a couple of different options. I can either highlight it and click on the run command. I could put my cursor at the end of that line and click the run command. Or I could put my cursor at the end of that line and click control enter or command enter if you're on Mac. And what you see is that ran the command in the console and created the object up in my environment. So we've got numeric data types, but we can also put different types of data into an object. So for example, say I wanted to create a character data, or that is a text data type or data object. So I could create something that's called CHR, just means character data, and I'm just gonna put my name into that. So Tony into character data. I click on that, control enter, or click on run if you like. And what we see is it's created a character object called uh, CHR and its value is Tony. Okay. Now there's other data types called 
um, a logical data type, which is either true or false. So I could call my logical, I could put true into that if I like, and I'm going to hit, well, this time actually, I'll, I'll put it at the end, end of the line and hit run. We can see it did the same thing. And we can see our logical has a value of true. Now, for logicals, you don't actually need to put the whole word true. You could either use just T, and that would create a logical that's true, or F for false. So now I've just updated that, and we can see our logical is now false. And I can make it true again just by changing it to T. So we've got objects that contain a single value. But we can also have an object that contains a list of values, and we call those vectors. So it's a vector of values. So for example, say I wanted to create a numeric vector. I might want to call it numVector, and into that I'm going to put a bunch of different numbers. And the way we do that is by using this command called C, and just C open bracket. Now, C means concatenate or join together. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I hit Control Enter and run that command, we can see that I've got this new vector, and its value is numbers 1 through 5, and its values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can create different types of vectors as well. So I could create just even numbers, even vector. And into that, I'll put 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Control Enter. And now I've got an even vector. And we can see there's 1 through 5, and its values are 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. OK. There's also, as we can see, logical vectors. So I could go logical vector. And into that, I'll put a bunch of um, true and false values. So it could be two comma, true, comma, false, comma, false. Now we can see here's my logical vector is a logical values. There's four of them, true, true, false, false. Great. So what that means is now I've got various lists of things that I can create. All right, so the last data type that I'm going to talk about is what's called a data frame. And a data frame is basically like an Excel table. So it's got rows and it's got columns as well. And in order to create that, we can use the command called data.frame. And uh, we can create an object. And what I'll show you is that, in fact, RStudio really helps us out in running some of these commands because it will anticipate what you are looking for and give you suggestions based on what you are currently typing. So for example, I want to create a data frame. I'll call it df. And into that, I want to use the data frame command. So I start typing data. Now it gives us a bunch of different options here. Data, data class, data entry, data frame. Now I can just click on that if I like, and it's given me open and closed brackets. Now it also, if you had seen, if I type data.frame and I hover over that, it gives me some information about it. And it tells us a few of the different things that we can put in between those brackets up here. And we'll see more of this as we go on. So I'm going to use data frame. I've hovered over it. I can click on it or I could have hit tab and it opens that up. Now I'm going to put into that even vector and num vector. So if I even start typing that, we can see it pops up as well. I can click on that if I want, or just hit tab to finish it, and comma, and I'm going to type in num vector. Then you can see it's right down at the bottom here, and I'm going to use that. Now, if I hit Control Enter, now we can see I've got this DF object that's a data frame, and it is five observations of two variables. So that was my 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And in fact, we see this data frame 
object also has this little table looking icon up here in my global environment. And if I click on that, it'll actually show us that table that I've just created. And they've got the headings of even vector and num vector and their values. Now, if I close that tab, notice that that didn't delete the data or delete the data frame. It's still here in my object. So I can always keep it. If I want to delete it, I can select that value and delete it by using this broom icon as well. But I'm not going to do that right now. Now, if I created a data frame and we'll just call it df2 and I wanted to use the same command, but this time I'm going to use even vector and logical vector. The thing is, this is going to give us an error. So if I try and run this command, we see here down in our console, it says error in data.frame arguments imply a differing number of rows, five and four. So the problem is that when you're creating a data frame, all of the different vectors have to be the same length or else it's not going to be able to put them together because it doesn't know what to do with the empty space. So what I could do if I wanted, I can go in here and I can go back to um, one of my previous commands. I could either cycle through it in our console by using the up and down arrows. I can also go over to my environment here, click on my history and look at my different uh, commands. I can select logical vector. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it there and I'm going to add another value to it. So now it is five values long. Now, if I take this and create df2 from even vector and logical vector, this should now work because even vector has got five values and logical vector also has five values. Now, what we can see is I've created this new data frame. We can see here data frame two, and it's five observations, two variables. And now we can see that it's got these even values and true and false values. So you can mix your types of values within a data frame. All right, so I hope that gave you a good intro into the R and R Studio environment. And next time what we're going to do is we're going to get into actually using R and R Studio to do a little bit of descriptive statistics, such as figuring out the mean, standard deviation, and other types of descriptives. So check out the next video.